Hello all, this is Scott Grove of GroovyMusicLessons.com here with uh, hour number 23, part number 23 of Ask Scott Grove Anything. This should take us right up to the end of it. So I gave you guys actually an extra nine days on top of the original thing, so we're answering the last of the questions. Um, okay, so let's get right to it. Um, we got Michael Abston asking, do you think there's any difference in tone, ca tone caps, sound that is, if so, uh, what kind you think's good for maybe a Les Paul? Ah, uh, you could try them. I never have changed them at all. I don't see any reason people uh, swear that they do, so you can ask other less Paul users what they think but um, people who change out things like that if you're not happy with the guitar to begin with I know it's not this isn't your answer but this is my advice if you're not happy with the guitar and it's tone to begin with why'd you buy it you know so but if you really want to know from other less Paul people which I'm not a less Paul guy um, you can ask them and what their results were, but um, there are going to be differences, of course, um, and you never have to solder them in. You can simply alligator clip them in and check out different ones. They don't cost anything, hardly. Your local radio shack, you can grab these things, you know. <laughs> so you can try them, but. Um, Again, if you know your pickups are fine and nothing should have to be changed, you know you're carrying around a multi-thousand-dollar guitar. If you've got any kind of a real Les Paul, uh, say if you had Gibson or a Epiphone or a what or a Studio something, but I don't see any reason at all to change them out. But you can try. Like I said, just ask other people like over at mylespaul.com who care about Les Pauls to help you out with that one because I really have no suggestions. You know, I mean, they do make a difference, that's why they're there. But um, I'm not the one to answer that one for you. Okay? So, sorry, my friend. Um, Michael Abston, he asked, Did you block the Tone King? And then I wrote, Well, yes, I did. Then I unblocked him. I said, People just have to watch what they say. Then he also asked, um, I'm, I been blocked, lol, lol. So I'm not sure what that is, but anyway. Um, let's see. Don't know what that, I wrote to somebody. Junior Chopper. Hey Scott, what fretboard radius do you prefer? Um, like a 12. Would be my preference. Um, the little seven and a half on a fender just on the old fenders just don't quite do it for me. The nine and a halfs are fine, but I like them flatter. I like the Jackson from the old days, you know, those are cool. Just flat and wide and skit thin, skinny, like the PVs almost. Um, what else does he ask? Where'd he go? <laughs> Um, okay, there he is. Also, do you think all the best music has been written? As far as I'm concerned, the best country music ended in the 90s and everything else ended around 89. I really enjoy your videos, thanks. I agree with you, my man. The music, and again, I don't know if it's just us because we are the age we are, but yeah, I haven't heard anything out that is going to stand the test of time at all. Um, you can ask, and again, I'm a DJ, um, and nobody asks for anything anymore you know this stupid red solo cut thing that to Toby Keith did and hated from day one and then he had to just milk it because everybody loved it but um, that's not gonna be a hit <laughs> ever again you know nobody gonna care in two years but no I haven't heard any music that's gonna stick around you know people are thinking Adele is gonna stick around no.
<laughs> I don't see anything sticking around. Nothing I've heard in forever. Like you said, probably um, late 80s, early 90s, and music as we knew it is gone. So, thanks for your question, my friend. Uh, here's Carlos Medina Ramirez uh, replying to somebody, so it's not a question. Okay. Michael Abstin again. Sorry for the repost. iPhone not working. Okay. Good enough. Uh, here's TBR. Not PBR, Paps Blue Ribbon. I'm burning more videos. Chill with me for a second. Okay, that one should go. I'm playing with my Willie. Actually, it's some Willie Nelson DVDs are burning. Hey, Scott, I know this is a little bit late. No, not yet. <laughs> but I thought of a question for you. Do you still have the ovation you won at the Guitar Instructor Contest? That was a great lesson, by the way. Um, I was one of the... I won an ovation, Acoustic Electric, and in a contest for music teachers, you know, and from Ovation, and they picked me out of a bunch of people, so they gave me a brand new Ovation guitar, and I gave that away uh, the very next week. I have done many, many online giveaways on my website for guitars and lap steels and all kinds of things, and it was for people who actually bought a lesson from me. They would be entered. For every lesson they bought from me, they would be entered in for the contest to win them the guitars. Brand new, always brand new stuff. And that guitar, brand new, I gave it away. Um, and most of the people didn't even know they got entered in. I always put a thing, thanks for um, the order, you've been entered in the contest. And then when I drew the winners for every contest, none of them ever even knew that they were in a contest. And all I asked of them to just send me a picture of you, you know, of that person with their new instrument so I can post it on the website. Not one person ever said thanks. Not one person ever sent the picture. Never, never, never. So I finally just quit doing it. <laughs> Figured people just wouldn't just say thanks, but not even send a picture, not, but not say thanks. Nothing. They didn't care. So, yeah, I gave it away to somebody who didn't give a flying shit. Sadly enough. Okay, here's X-Ray Xerox. Hey Scott, if you are still answering questions, I have one. You seem to like a lot of metal on metal things. Metal nut, metal zero fret, stainless steel fret, uh, big mass metal bridge, uh, metal roller saddles, metal slides, etc. Uh, uh, it almost seems you're trying to get the guitar version of a pedal steel. Yeah as much sustain as possible. Who's not looking for it? I mean, it's just the most smooth sounding instrument and even that there is. Um, assuming this, you know that pedal steel players use metal finger thumb picks as well. My, tech, my question to you is why you don't use a metal pick instead of what looks like a Tortex based plastic pick. Okay, think about it. They use the thumb picks which are plastic and then the Pedal steel players use the steel finger picks. So you get two different sounding things going on. So I don't use any of it actually. Um, when it comes to me actually sitting down playing pedal steel, I use my fingers. Nothing but thumb and these two fingers. And um, it came from having to switch from both, from guitar to acoustic to keyboards to pedal steel to whatever. Um, between every song or in the middle of songs and I don't have time to put picks on while I'm, you know, this pick, this pick, try to find out which one goes on which finger. You know, I could paint them two different colors or something, a dot on them, and, but you don't have time to do that. So I just sit down and play the damn thing and then get back up and play or I'd grab my guitar pick and just go down and play it with... So, that's the way I do it. So, um, but I like playing it natural with my fingers and I can just go a lot quicker, of course, with three digits than you can with one guitar pick. But I uh, just got used to the sound, and I just, by, just threw some more high end on the amp, and you're good to go. You know, so. so. Just one of those things. Everything I play, I play bare fingers. 99% of the time, I play electric guitar without a pick. So, same thing. Here's 20. I'm zipping through these because there's six pages, and I gotta get through them on this video. <laughs> 
and again, this is hour number 23, not quite 24 hours, but number 23. Um, here's 22 Donster. Hey Scott, left your videos. What's your opinion of Gretsch and Maserat guitars? Um, have you ever had any past experience with them? Um, hate them. Don't like them. Nothing about them whatsoever. Zero. Not a could care less. <laughs> Don't like them. Okay. Um, Cordovan B. Hello Scott, just watched your State Line Casino show. Four hours, eleven minutes. Great performance. Looks like you're having a pretty good time. My question is, what is your favorite thing to eat for comfort food? Are you on a restricted diet? Do you drink two? Why do you drink two gallons of tea a day? I just do, man. I just say I have nothing to do, so I just sit there and drink, 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 and piss, 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 piss. I know TMI, but there it is. Um, comfort food. I have no comfort food. I just sit around. I eat my Lunchables, some grapes, a lot of these sour popsicle things, and that's it. But I really do like that Hawaiian bread and spinach dip. I don't get it very often. Once a year, I think, but that would be my choice if I could have it all the time. I guess I could if I would just make the damn stuff. <laughs> okay, Judy Stokes. Replying to somebody, no question. Okay. Next page. Well, that makes it easy. Everybody's replying to everybody else. And there's me replying to somebody else. Uh, here's Stephen. 11359. If you could mix a com combo nation of any two guitars, what would they be? By the way, I love your videos. They've helped me a lot. I did it, man. I did it uh, quite a few times, actually. Right there. The Iceman and the Strat. So I made the combination. And then I did the Dean Cadillac and a Strat. And then I did the Ibanez Destroyer and a Strat. <laughs> and then I did a Lucite Spiderweb Design Telecaster and a Strat. So, done them all, my friend. So I keep doing all my favorites, but do them up as a Strat. Now I'm going to do a Breadwinner as a Strat, an old Ovation Breadwinner. So everything, but redone as a Strat on steroids. Here's Elvis. No, I ain't Elvis. This Paulinus. I can't even get this last name. M-S-C-I-C-H-A-U-S-K-A-S. Hi again, Scott. Howdy, my friend. In the first video, explain that you don't want to, you don't want the Evertune bridge because you can't do bends behind the net. It says actually you can just tighten the strings till it's at the very end of the tune snap point. Only sacrifice you can't do the neck bend thing though, and I do that like a thousand times a night. So again. So it's considering that Evertune has so many advantages, such as chopping your entire guitar up, such as keeping your guitar in tune forever, no pitch, going up when hitting the strings harder, etc. Um, is that one sac sacrifice really such a big deal to you? Oh yeah, I bend that neck like crazy, and I use it and I play it. I when I want a low D, I just bend my neck. I don't have to retune the string. Um, I do all my whammies that way because I don't use real whammies and yeah, it, the Evertune is not a consideration for me at all. I just, I'm not giving up anything. Um, it'd be great for some other people but not I. Okay, here we have Dano B Man 07. Hi Scott, I don't think this has been asked yet, but uh, uh, same thing as everything, I guess. What do you think of Randy Rhodes? I think he's dead. David Gilmore and Alex Lifeson as players. Would love to hear your opinion about him. Don't care. Not at all. Um, I've heard Randy Rhodes maybe once. David Gilmore, I've heard on the couple hits. 
and Alex likes, likes them the same thing, just on the hits, but I don't listen to them, and I don't care. I wish I'd, I, I don't wish I did, I just don't care. <laughs> um, I guess they're fine, you know. Nothing special, um, they're not a household name, as far as, like, everybody knows who. If you show, if you take a picture of Kiss, I'm sorry to go to Kiss all the time, show it to anybody in the world of any age. I don't care if you go to Ethiopia and find a six-month-old kid and show it to them, they're going to know that's, that's Kiss, you know, but nobody else, nobody knows who the hell they are. They, they wouldn't know one of those names if you threw it out. Um, Eddie Van Halen, they would probably know. Steve Vai, nobody would know, other than guitar players. It's just people don't know, and I really care as much as they do. It's like, I just don't care about them. You know, it's just give me some good music to listen to, and I don't care who's playing it, as long as it's something cool. But, yeah, I don't fall for all the... I don't I don't get into all these people at all, but I, I don't know. I can't say anything else if I don't get into them, so I just don't know. Um, Paul Hopkins, he's a good dude. My bass player buddy. Um, I know that these questions are for Scott to answer. Oh, this is him answering somebody else, so I get to keep moving along. He was answering dick fags and motherfuckers. That's the person's name. Okay, let's go back to Paul, Paul, Paulius Macadamia Nuts, or whatever the last name was. Hey, Scott. Damn, I wish you were in good health. Me too, my man. I really enjoy your videos, and it's really cool that you have the patience to answer all the questions. Here's another question. What do you think of the Strictly 7 Custom Shop? Would you ever make a guitar there? Never heard of it. Uh, if you do not know any better options on where my dream long scale 7 string could be made, um, yeah. Um, David Anderson, who built the black and white one back here for me, and who built me my, I don't know if you can see that purple one up here in the corner, and the guy has made so many things. I had my five string here for a while. Um, he makes them. He's got a seven string double. Let's see, what is that? My seven string flying V with all the LEDs and everything he's building right now. So, you just put it in Scott Grove, and... David Anderson on my channel and it'll go right to him. He'll make you anything you want and better than you can imagine. Uh, let's see. Here's Gerald from Gerald Re Gerald's Restoration. Mr. Gerald Ray. Scott, my brother. Uh, how far are you from Austin City, Nevada? Never heard of it, so I guess I'm far. Have you ever heard of the camel races there? Nope. <laughs> my buddy was telling me about it and I wanted to ask you also do you know anything about a tree with lots of shoes in it I saw it on a movie I don't know if it's the same tree though hopefully real soon I can come visit you that would be cool uh, my buddy Jeff is wanting to uh, take me to see the Ponderosa Ranch where they did Bonanza that'd be cool love you lots man is what it says Gerald love you back buddy, buddy you rock you rock man Here's Panther Piss 7000. Uh, I'm going to get my willy up here and see if these DVDs will work. If not, I'll put some new DVDs in. So I'm working here, folks, at the same time. Otherwise, the stuff doesn't go out here in about one hour. Okay. Here's somebody answering something to himself, I think. It says, why in the world did someone mark this as spam? It's a legitimate question about a guitar that was produced by Ibanez in the 70s. A lot of people, a lot of people are familiar with the Les Paul copies Ibanez made, but know nothing about the Strat copy they called the Challenger. I knew that was a Strat copy. I'm simply asking Scott to share whatever he knows about him. Okay, yeah, I thought that was a Strat copy, and I did play them way, way, way back when, and. Knowing Ibanez, and sorry to turn my back to you kids, but I have to. Knowing Ibanez, they would have been every good, every bit as good or better than what Fender was putting out. 
especially Fender in the 70s, according to most people, they just hated Fender in the 70s, especially in the later 70s, but the Challenger, like I said, all the Ibanez stuff made in Japan was every bit as good or better, generally better, than anything it was copying. Okay. Okay, let's see if this works. And escape, escape, and go. Like I said, still working here, kids, so bear with me. Okay, I'm back with you. Um Okay, let's go to Medex 1985. As you know, you sent a DV 12 string guitar for beginners to him. Is there any chance of a more advanced lesson in the future? Sure. No problem. Yep, that was simply yeah, the beginner one. So, yeah, if you want it, you got it, man. Just people ask and. I shall deliver it at some point. Some I've been waiting for seven years to do, but uh, business is good. It's not a bad thing, but that keeps me from making videos. Um, except for these right here. Here's Mr. Abston. Hi, Mr. Grove. I know this is a dumb question, but I, it's not dumb if you don't know it. If you don't know the answer, it's not dumb. But I hear it a lot mostly on YouTube what the hell is a troll or trolling mean people think I'm a troll it's basically where people just go around from like you know you, you just came to my channel and then they yell stupid obscene bullshit like you suck motherfucker you know and your mom is a whore and a rat and then they take off and they write a whole bunch of shit like that on every single damn place they go to and they keep coming back to your place and doing that till you block them um, and then they just make a new screen name and then they come back and do it again and do it again and do it again I've got people that's been doing that to me for these seven years same same people new names every day and they just think it's funny and have no life and just come there just to bug the holy shit out of you but they call me that sometimes too because I go to different guitar forums where they're starting big long posts about me and what a dick I am and all that stuff and I go there to confront them and then they call me a troll for going there and trying to save my good name but I usually tell them to go fuck themselves but that always gets me kicked off but so be it <laughs> I don't back down okay uh, so it's my question sounds dumb but yeah it took a while to learn what lol on Facebook <laughs> what that meant so but I can't get no one to tell me so what the hell is trolling yeah that's it just going around screwing with people or what the hell is a troll a person who screws with people I ain't dumb or nothing just damn if you hear something or see it a few times you just want to know what it means that would be it my friend <laughs> so more than happy to tell you if I know it I'll let you know if I don't I'll let you know that I just don't know. Okay, what we got? Oh, there's a couple pages stuck together. Alright, looking good, looking good, I think. Um, from Michael Abston, correction. Okay. Hear something or see it many times, you just won't know what it means. Okay, I got you. Uh, Wesley Murphy, you really haven't taken the comments down. No, I haven't. That's why I'm finishing up. <laughs> Just decided to do some more. Um, from Monk Three Row. Hi Scott. I know that you do some woodworking and that you like guitars. Have you ever tried considering making guitars? Nope. I'd have no business do it. Doing it. Just leave it to the pros and tell them what I want. And just nothing that I would be good at. I don't think. I have no real desire to even try just be basically because I have no way of finishing them meaning putting on the finish and clear coats and all that that is a nightmare so without the proper facilities to do so I don't want a bunch of naked guitars sitting around or just stained wood stuff just 
wouldn't wouldn't do me. Um, okay, Stephen eleven three five nine always has a lot of questions. What is your favorite episode of South Park? Um, Simpsons did it. <laughs> Either that or when uh, Butters becomes a pimp. I like that one. And he says, also, someone is trying to sell me a 1964 Epiphone Casino with the missing pit guard. Is that a good investment? It could be. Um, depends on the price, though. I mean, people buy them. Just depends on if it's 100% original. If you can find that missing pit guard and what they're asking for it. You know, it's all condition, condition, condition. Uh, he also asks, what do you think about the war in Afghanistan? I think everybody has given up their life for no reason. If you're asking what I think. And again, they should have been nuked um, 12 years ago and had the whole country wiped out. Pakistan, Afghanistan, all just nuked. See ya, no survivors. No need to waste more American lives at all. We are, used to be the strongest country in the world, but he also asks, um, have you ever been hunting? To which I replied, actually, on here. I said, nope. I have a grocery store right down the street. <laughs> okay, here's a Pepper, Pepper Foxy. Hi, Scott. I love your videos and love how you hate uh, all these people. <laughs> yeah, most of them. He says, haha, I just find it funny. Anyway, keep up the good work. Uh, one of the best accounts on YouTube. Thank you. Um, it's like a TV channel. <laughs> uh, but what kind of total number of instruments you have? Oh, but what is the total number of instruments you have? And the grand total in U.S. dollars estimated. Um, again, I know the total instruments are on my website. GroovyMusicLessons.com. I'm just over here doing my work. I'll keep talking. Um, so I never count. Um, and there's, I usually just got, well, this one's going to be worth more here, so I don't know if a couple hundred thousand dollars maybe. Something like that at the current moment. And um, that would be that, my friend. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, as far as insurance goes, I have to go look. Um, let me get this done one more time, and that should take care of it for the rest of what we're doing here. And this, and this, and this. Again, I have to work this way or it will not, nobody will get their videos. And I do not edit videos. It doesn't happen. I don't believe in it. <laughs> um, I just run in real time and whatever happens, happens. If I rip, rip off a big old toot, so be it. Okay. In three seconds, I shall be ready. Two, one. Hit the button. Yep. Okay. I'm back. Okay, let's go to uh, me. <laughs> okay. Um, Stephen11359 again. Um, no, I already did all that. Oh, this is Peppery Fox again, and this is me answering something to Stephen again. What was his question this time? <laughs> I don't mind. I'll read what I wrote. Since I'll be closing this down as soon as I finish reading these last couple. Don't know what that is. Uh, don't know. Okay. <laughs> is that everything on that one? Yeah, Afghanistan one page. Okay. So let's go to Nan Nanowass. <laughs> Hi Scott, uh, in one of your videos you said we can quit our jobs and make a living buying and selling guitars for profit. Yes you can. 
um, it will be awesome if you show us exactly how to do it. Um, you're in over your head already, I can tell. How to mess with prices, how to sniff out a good deal, how to know the guitar's actual worth, it will be very useful for someone looking for looking to buy a guitar for himself too. Thank you so much for every video you've done and you're uh, willing to share. I love you. Thank you much. Um, yeah, God, you have to know your stuff like I do and hopefully even more because I, I know what I know um, than the other guitars I don't know anything about, you know, when it comes to the Gretches and the other crap that I just don't give a holy crap about. I don't know anything about them because I don't care. So those still hold plenty of value, but I have no desire to even give them a home at all. Even if I think I can make a buck, I just, I don't sell what I don't know inside and out. If a guitar comes in here and it's missing anything at all, I will get the right part and from the right ear for it. You know, so, yeah, you got to know your stuff inside out to train somebody to do it. There's no way, man, you got to, you got to, there are so many morons out there trying to do it and they're screwing it up so bad and I'm always correcting them on all their ads and they're like, how the hell you know, and nobody wants to take any lip from me, um, but... They all bitch at me when I try to tell them what their stuff really is. They're like, who the fuck are you? you know, like, trying to help, but nobody wants help these days. So, yeah, you got you just have to know your, you have to know exactly what you're selling, as much as you know everything about yourself. It's just that way, man. It's just. I mean, I'll try to help any way I can, and yeah, you can if you know your stuff. Anything that you know everything about or enough about to turn a buck, yeah, you can 100% do it. But you can't just pick out of the air, I want to do it on this. And, I mean, you better spend about you know 10 years of solid work on just one brand in certain years, and then, then you can think about doing just those and picking up other information as you go. It really takes, if you know your shit inside out, <laughs> you can do it. Uh, Mr. Z Z Z Z R R R R R. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the G and L Comanche? Oh, sorry about this one already. And the Z coil pickups. That's what kills them. It says watching comparison videos on YouTube. I can't tell much of a difference sonically. I uh, love the question and answer series, by the way. Uh, better than primetime TV, so that's cool. Keep it coming and best wishes. Um, problem with the Z coil pickups are that they, you know, it's like having a tele pickup slanted down towards the bridge, but then they do that with every single coil, so that you're actually bringing the treble side of it even closer to the bridge than what a tele is. So, I mean, you talk about a nice pick sound. I mean, you'd have to run your tone almost off on that guitar for it to even sound playable, you know, listenable. So, Z coils, they'd be fine if they were in a different location. Somebody just didn't think it through. The guitar itself was great. Just get rid of the damn pit guard and put regular pickups in it from GNL because they make a fabulous guitars. But the, whoever thought of the Z coil, bam. You know, no, re no reason that person should live. It's just stupid. Anybody I know of who's ever had one got rid of it right away. It's like, why'd you buy it? Well, it looked cool. And, and they didn't play it. So first so ordered it online. Here's one from that person again, and they were marked as spam, and I forgot to unmark it so it didn't show it. Here's Zad Arnis. Says, what equipment do you recommend for recording audio at home? I would like to record guitar and bass lines. Again, you really can't go wrong with this Tascam 488. Um, most people are doing the computer thing. I still like to do the actual machine over here. It burns the DVD right there you know so it's ready to roll you know right from there it saves it it's got a huge hard drive on it you can mix as much junk up to 96 tracks on it you've got tons of places to plug it in you can record eight tracks at a time if you want to and all the effects are built in guitar effects you don't need distortion and all that stuff it's all in there you can put it on as you're recording or you can re 
it's just a great thing and you can pick them up for nothing now so again that's the Tascam uh, 2488 just such a great unit everybody has one it's like an asshole everybody's got one um, same person asked what multi effects for bass would you recommend bass players and effects um, maybe not certain model but but brand of multi effect if you're going for a brand always go for Roland or Boss as far as I'm concerned um, Zoom no Digitech yeah I'm not bad but Boss is always a solid bet so the Roland Boss stuff um, but I'm always into the all-in-one things not individual pedals I think you'll be happier with it too um, mainly you need a compressor some people they'll like the flanger or maybe a bass wah which is an auto wah or an actual pedal wah wah um, those can be cool um, some distortion sometimes you know if you like that tone okay to get right through all of them make sure I get there I have a brilliant Muppet Sex 69 he's answering somebody okay so no good Let's go to Michael Gray. Hey Scott, I have about four questions. Have you tried the either crystal frets? I've seen them. Or glass tone? No. No desire. Metal against metal. Two. Could I find a RC oh a roller nut and saddles for a six string bass or any bass for that matter? Um you probably have to have it made, machine shop made. Uh but get a hold of who makes so many of them? Mighty Might makes some. They make really crappy ones. Watch out for the ones where there's two strings on one roller. Do not buy that. Always buy end where they have individual rollers for each string. Because you don't want one to be rolling while you're bending a note or something and then the other one to be traveling sharp or flat with it. It's just a, such a dumb design, that one. Um, also, he has number three. I know you mentioned a lot that you prefer a metal nut because the frets are metal, but what if the nut and the frets are all made of composite material, stone or even bone? Um, you'll break bone frets. Uh, you try to bend a string and you can break a bone nut. You've, you've done it a million times, I'm sure, if you play with any authority at all, and then if you try to play steel strings against bone frets you're just gonna destroy them that fast so that would never work um, stone you'll break that too uh, I know you prefer a bright sound but what is your opinion on tape wounds or on for bass guitar it's horrible unless you just want to stand up bass it just we call it the fart bass they're just horrible Unless you want it to sound like a stand-up bass, then go get a stand-up bass. But tape wounds are for old fuddy-duddies back in the 50s that still wanted... Remember, this is a pickup magnetic trying to pick up sound, and you've got it covered in, literally, tape. So it's... You don't get much. So nasty, nasty. Okay, here's Northlander 30. Hi, Scott. I'd like to know... If your guitar room is temperature controlled, yes it is. And how you combat dust accumulation, that's a bitch. Dust is horrible in here, so it's just, uh, you have to keep on it. Also, uh, would you recommend, what would you recommend for a good volume pot? I enjoy your videos and knowledge. Take care. Uh, and hope you're feeling a little bit better. Uh, thanks from your friend in Ontario, Canada, Ian. Um, volume pots. Um, you have to. I have a whole video on that actually, so look for that. Um, just put Scott Grove volume. A couple will be volume pedals, but it has to do with volume and tone pots, and it talks about what pot values for each kind of pickup. So check that out on my channel, and there's a whole video like an hour long on it. So check that out. You'll get your answer for sure. Okay, here's David Embry. This is Scott. Love your lessons and videos. Thank you. Bought your Mega download for around 50 bucks. Best deal around. And he says best value out there. <laughs> it is. It's absolutely a lifetime worth 
for the price of less than two videos with some moron with lessons for him and you don't even get a video uh, more than I could learn in a lifetime <laughs> there it is okay um, very easy for a dumb redneck Okie to understand yeah, I remember playing with Pake McIntyre Pacus uh, Rebus brother um, I was curious about your wife, how your white how your wife dealt with your openness of being ready to die and you know she has trouble with it but she accepts it so she knows it's coming and we're both taking it in stride and it's you know tough on a family like anything else it's rough she just now woke up I can hear and they're getting ready to go to work but uh, my wife suffers this is him David says his wife suffers from chronic migraines it always makes me feel terrible when she talks that way because there's nothing I can do to take it away the pain away wish I could help you both thank you and he, he's enjoyed the Q&A videos thanks man yeah it really it's like having a migraine 24 7 on on steroids and it never goes away and again you just eat pain pills like Tic Tacs and it eats away your gut and then you croak so um, I feel for her too man I wouldn't wish this on anybody it's no way to live at all it's, there's no quality of life here at all none and I thank you for your um, well wishes I really do thanks David here's Kyle Saluka again what are your thoughts on progressive rock? Rush, yes, King Crimson, Pink Floyd, Kansas, etc. Um, Rush, same thing. I just don't know anything about these bands. You know, it was fun back then. Um, it was fun to have guitar rock and bass rock. You know, I'm, I was actually sitting here playing um, Roundabout and on my bass just this morning and just having a good old time. It's like, man, just whatever happened to riff based music. Just, I mean, it was guitar rock or bass rock. Or just, it was all based on riffs. Uh, there's all my Willie DVDs. My my Willie just fell out. <laughs> but yeah, I miss that stuff. I wish it would, something would go back to it. I know there's, again, here on YouTube, great bands that are doing riff-based southern rock or classic progressive rock like that. and It's just too bad, man. Uh, what are you, here's Kyle, what are your thoughts on, um, same thing, I'm sorry, and this one's been marked as spam, didn't do it, that was for James Clark, I don't know what it says, here's Rifle Twist, why do graphite reinforcement rods for the neck of a guitar cause so much controversy with guitar manufacturers, because they're morons and they are cork sniffers, they don't get that graphite is the secret to everything it will solve the problems forever and people are pissed that wood just doesn't work for guitars um, so there there have been several times that I asked about this to a couple of companies and some become angry for me asking other companies love building this feature into their necks other guitars uh, same thing with the volute and reverse mounts for the locking nut on the Floyd Rose tremolo why? Yeah, people are just cork sniffers and they don't want things to change. The things that suck most about guitars, they want them to stay the same. These are just sheer idiots that want nothing to change. No matter how much better it would be, people are against product uh, progress, I'm sorry. So, yeah, people are just dildos, morons, freaks. They don't want nothing to change, no matter how advantageous it would be to them just plain guitarded stupidity. Kurt Larson. I wish I would have thought of this question earlier. It may be a good one to make into a full length video. Let's find out. Scott, I know you buy most of your guitars on eBay, but when given the chance to examine a guitar you are interested in, what are the most important things to check to make sure the guitar is in good shape? Uh, they would probably be the same things you check when you first receive an eBay purchase guitar. Um, the neck. And then, of course, everything has to work and everything has to be 100% original. Um, 
and then of course it has to be in amazing condition so otherwise it goes back but I have that protection so I can just send it right back and eBay will be on my side and PayPal will be on my side every single time because I do so much work and they make a mint off of me so yeah I just you have to check each and every little thing and make sure that you've asked enough questions to back it up should you have a problem so before you make a purchase send three or four letters to the person just to grease the wheels so you have a leg to stand on before you ever hit the buy it now okay Nukem I love it Nukem 37 Scott you're a real character that's for sure I find your videos not only educational but quite entertaining thanks um, life has dealt you a shitty hand I've had some good ones too but yeah uh, yet you share your remaining time doing all this work uploading your YouTube vids my question is this do you own stock in Arizona tea and Tootsie Pops? I should <laughs> I keep myself in business I just checked out some rain song guitar videos and they sound a little bright for me even the jumbo JM1000 I like the bottom end and which is why I'm having one custom made because they don't make one big enough for me now they're going to guess I need to hear one in my hands you do really do you really do to form a real opinion thanks again dude yeah you really got to hear them in your hands but yeah I had to go and have one custom made because they don't make them my way yet but if you have this they do and they're doing it so I was all about getting one and I'm, I'm getting her it's probably going to be October. I said six to eight weeks from whenever I bought those Gene Simmons axes and stuff. So I'll keep you informed for sure. Uh, here's Brand Brand Drew Brand Brand Drew 1000. Hey Scott, I'm from Newfoundland, Canada. He's a Newfie. Uh, just wanted to let you know uh, your videos reach pretty far. That's cool, man. I love that, just being worldwide, you know, being a worldwide dumbass. <laughs> a couple of questions for you. One, what do you think of Imperato Acoustic Electric Guitars with two humbuckers? I have never heard of them, my friend. Um, I've heard that there are a rep of... That there are a rep of the Gibson Hummingbird. And two... Where's my goddamn John Prime video that I requested? <laughs> I haven't made any new pay videos simply because there's no room for them at all on the uh, flash drive. So I don't want to tell everybody that I'm selling you every video I have and then have something missing. To lie is right next to, right under the list of stealing. Steal from me, you know, you're fucked. Uh, lie to me, you're just as close to it. Uh, fuck my old lady, you're dead. <laughs> so I honestly can't do the video until people make larger flash drives. Uh, they're starting to come out with 128 gigs, but the high, the prices are high yet. So I'm going to wait for the 128 gig flash drives to come down a little bit. Then I can make a whole bunch of new videos for sale. But right now I want to make sure everybody gets all of them for the low, low price. So that's, that's the only reason, otherwise I just have to make the video for free, which I can do, but um, let me get through the rest of these. i got about 12 minutes to do it in. Um, let's see. Uh, where's the Prime video? And three, do you like Blaze Foley? LOL. Don't know who it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, take it easy. Uh, may the wind be at your back and the sun upon your face. And don't piss in the wind when you're riding a motorcycle. <laughs> I made that part up. Here's Alex Hollins. Scott, I'd appreciate your views on the PV AT200 Autotune guitar. I think that we could be on a cusp of something big. I, I already think it is. It's huge. Uh, like what happened to keyboards in the 80s, turning, um, tuning problems can um, 
really hold a beginner back, as I remember from way back. Yeah, the PVAT Auto Tune 200 is much better than the Ever Tune. It's just a whole different ball game, but it is a better, much better system for anybody wondering. Uh, once they get past the initial glitches, which they have a couple, I think they might have something to use even uh, for the experienced player, alternate tunings with perfect intonation, which they already have. See, with the auto tune, I mean, with the uh, ever tune, you don't get perfect intonation. You just get, you know, the strings in tune open. These give you perfect intonation with that touch of a auto. The PVAT 200s are going to freak you guys out. Look them up. And they were just on the cusp. Um, you guys don't know what you're missing. So look at that before you look at the Evertune. That's what I'm looking at. Um, I'm looking for the .2 or .3 version. But uh, see, I know that you're a PV fan, but maybe Roland would seem more obvious brand. And it's hard to say, but it's still all auto tune, so it can be implemented with any thing. So I'm sure other people will use it and roll and it'll probably run with it big time. Here's Rodney Livingston. Scott, I have found a Johnson JM150 but no J12 controller. You'll find one. I have found some J8s. Uh, do you recommend getting one of those or waiting for the J12? Wait for the J12. The 8 will not work on your amp the way you want. Um, I love your videos. I'm like hitting refresh hoping that you post another. Thanks man, that's too cool of you. Uh, thanks for the videos and letting us in on and you know what you know about life, Rodney. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Yeah, I get the joint. J12 is the whole heart and soul of the amp. Uh, to play without it is like having a leg chopped off. You'll freak when you get the J12. And hit me up for all my patches too. It's just a quick load and you're done. <laughs> a quick load and you're done. Okay, here's from Nike. Nike manned. One, hey Scott, always loved your information, and this Q and A thing is awesome. Thank you, I really enjoyed this, and this is the last one, uh, the last Q and A um, thing. So maybe we'll do it again. Um, I hope you're still going to keep answering. <laughs> I'd love to, dude. Um, this is really going into my time, but it's okay. Uh, totally cool. A uh, real simple question. Uh, when you were learning guitar and hit that frustration point with something, how did you get over that particular hurdle? I got hit by the guitar bug about a year and a half ago and I'm passionate about the instrument, love to play, want to be great, just seeing how you got through the rough spots. Thanks man, all my best, my friend. Um, I actually went to the animal clubs because I could get in with my stepdad and, to, and also the VFWs and legions, but the animal clubs being the eagles, elks, moose lodges, and there would be country bands playing in every one of those. And I would sit and watch because they would not teach me anything. So I would just sit there and just look, you know, being 14, 15, and just pick up what I could that way to get over the humps. And um, I went home and would try to retain as much as I could and then it would end up being my own version of whatever they did, you know, just from what I could see. But some of them knew that I was really looking, and they tried to hide it, just like Eddie Van Halen did at the beginning, because he didn't want to see everybody to see how the whole tapping thing worked. He would turn his back to the audience, but, yeah. So they were all assholes, and nobody would give me any anything. They wouldn't free up any information. And it's like, man, you guys are Moose Lodge bands. It's like, give it up. It's just a, it's a <laughs> people are stingy with their stuff sometimes. I don't know why. Here's one from Roland Dombrovskis. Um, I'm sure I butchered that, but you know who you are. It says, hi, what's the best humbucker guitars for cheapest price? <laughs> um, Peavy. Now, nah, let's see. Who's got the best humbucker guitars for the cheapest price? Um, that's one of them. Let's see. Who else has... Okay. God, the best is still going to be Paul Reed Smith. The SE models and buy them used. Just go on eBay or go to wherever and buy a used one. 
and it's just the whole ticket. Used, 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 and used again. Okay? So those are the best guitars you're ever going to get for the money. Okay, here's Wesley Murphy again. Could you do a video about acquiring a large collection of guitars and accessories? Part of it being about buying and selling on eBay, which I have done a video of, and part of it about uh, a good 10 or more guitars to start with. In my future, I want a collection of 34 guitars. Exactly 34. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll do another one of those. You got it, buddy. And for the final page, drum roll for this. And like I said, I went above and beyond. So here they are. And they're all from the same guy, and I've actually already answered them. So it'll be easy just to read the answers in the four minutes I have left. And they're all from Stephen11359. He said, someone is trying to sell me a 1964 casino with a missing pit guard. Is that a good investment? You heard that one. And I said, if uh, you're into that guitar kind of guitar, they are. Some people love them. I honestly wouldn't give more than $20 for one. <laughs> said that would just... I said that would be just so I could turn around and sell it for $40 tomorrow. <laughs> then he also asked, what do you think about Afghanistan? And these are the same questions again. And I wrote, I don't think that um, there have should have been anything more than a nuke dropped over there. Just like I said before. For a single U.S. soldier to have died there is retarded. For anyone to have gone over there is just beyond my comprehension. I think that everybody should have just stayed home, uh, go blow the fuck out of that part of the world and with a few planes and call it a day. And as the people there dying, who cares? There isn't anyone over there contributing a single thing to this planet. Wipe them all out. Yep, that's my honest opinion. So, And the last question. Here we are, kids, and somebody has to eat dog shit or something. Um, again, from Stephen. He said, uh, have you ever been hunting? And that's the one where I answered, no, I have a grocery store down the street. Why it came on here again, who knows. But there you go, folks. Scott Grove from GroovyMusicLessons.com kept my promise all the way through and, like I said, did the extra credit homework, too. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the q and I'm going to shut that down for now and come up with some more just fun stuff. So, cheers to y'all. And it was a hell of a ride, but again, I'm not a liar. I finished it, and I thank you guys for asking some cool questions. Okay? So, once again, Nanu Nanu, live long and prosper. And i got to go wrap my willy. Okay? Get it on the road again. <laughs> Huh. See you on whatever next adventure we do together. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye.